welcome once again, friends, to this uh, revision class. It's another day that we are going to carry out revision of uh, advanced financial management. We'll be looking at revision on this topic, investment decision. Investment decision. We're going to revise. It means that we covered in this topic, we are revising with a view of correcting any faults, okay? We are reworking out what we did previously so that if there is any area that we didn't, you didn't understand, we can correct. That's the meaning of revision. So we're going to revise and um, we'll be looking at a question that was examined by Kasneb. But before that, I hope you have all the relevant materials that you need for this revision. That is a past paper question, and um, if you don't have one, you can download it, really, from our website. You may also need to have a scientific calculator and a notebook plus a pen, and maybe you may need two pens, just in case one pen fails you. You make provision, okay, make provision. Uh, have two pens, provision for biro pen can call it provision for biropen. You may also need to have uh, present value tables. It's important, especially this topic. We'll be looking at questions that require us to discount figures and also to compound. We'll be compounding and discounting. So uh, you may need present value tables. And that's it. Then... Uh, that is what you need for f advanced financial management, uh, revision class, all right? So we look at a past paper question that was examined in by Kastneb in May 2014. That is question two. Question two. I read it, question two. I read it right away. Madara Limited is considering investing in one of two mutually exclusive projects, the relevant cash flows of each of the projects are shown in the table below. The firm's cost of capital is 5%. Cash flows accrue at the end of the year. So we have the table below the table. That table, we have project X, one column for project X, another column for project Y, and those are columns for shillings, and the shillings are in thousands, the three zeros, thousand. The first column, we are given the details. The first item, we are told initial investment for project X is 38 million 500. Initial investment, project Y, 37 million. The cash flows are given year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, year six. Okay? And remember, we are told that cash flows accrue at the end of the year. So these cash flows were received at the end of the years given, year one to six. So we have the figures under project X. We have the, the shillings under project Y. Then we are required, we are required, down the table, required, calculate for each project, number one, discounted payback period, number two, modified internal rate of return, number three, profitability index. So that is the question we are required to prepare, to calculate, to calculate. That's why I said you carry a calculator. The calculator will help us in calculating. We'll use a calculator to calculate. All right? So um, going back to the question again, again, remember we are revising. Don't forget we are revising. And uh, when you are revising, especially those who are appearing for exams, if you come across such a question, such a question, uh, you may come across a su such a question, similar question. You may not, mo most likely you may not have exact question, but you may have a similar question. We've never he had a situation 
where the examiner repeats questions. That has never happened in financial management. Questions are not repeated. You may have a similar question. In the event that you have a similar question, it's a good practice to read a question twice or three times. Okay? So we read it the second time. Madara Limited is considering investing in one of two mutually exclusive projects. So the question is, what are mutually exclusive projects? What are mutually exclusive projects? Remember, you are reading the second time with the view of analyzing the question. Mutually exclusive projects are projects in which uh, acceptance of one project excludes the others from consideration. Okay? The acceptance of one project excludes others from consideration. That means, for example, Madara Limited. We have Madara Limited is considering investing in one of the two mutually exclusive projects. He's considering, he has not uh, considered yet. He's considering, he's planning to invest in two projects. But these projects cannot be undertaken simultaneously. If he chooses to um, select or uh, select project X, then automatically project Y will not be considered. On the other hand, if Madara Limited chooses to invest in project Y, then automatically project X will be rejected. There are various methods um, available for Madara Limited to use in the process of selecting which project to undertake. And in this question, one of the methods is discounted payback period. This is a capital budgeting technique. We also have the modified internal rate of return, MIRR, MIRR. Then we have number three, the profitability index. Profitability index is another technique that can be used. So in this question, we are expected to calculate for each project uh, the three methods that are listed. That's important, all right? So that's what we are going to do. We are going to calculate discounted payback period for project X. Then we will also calculate the discounted payback period for project Y. But the question now arises, what, is, uh, what do we mean by discounted payback period? Discounted payback period, those are two things. Discounted payback period. So what is a payback period? Payback period is simply the time that elapses before the initial outlay is recouped or recovered. All right. For example, if you talk of project X, project X, the question is how long will it take uh, for the 38 million 500 to, uh, to be recovered? For how long? For how many years? How many months? Or are they days? We need to calculate. And as we are doing that, we will be looking, we'll be using the figures that have been discounted, the discounted figures. We are not going to look at the future values, the cash inflows that you are given in this figure are future values. So we need to discount, we need to discount these future values, the future values, the cash flows, the cash flows for each project will have to be discounted before we can determine the payback period. So we will discount these cash flows, then uh, we determine what will be the payback period. So that's what we are going to do right away. Right away, we are going to prepare um, to calculate the discounted payback period. Discounted payback period. We are solving question that was examined by Kasneb in May 2014, question two. May 2014, May 2014, question two. Question two. The first requirement is a payback discounted, discounted, discounted payback period, discounted payback period. To discount is simply to compute the present value, to compute the present value of future cash flows, to compute the present value, bringing future cash flows into the present terms. That is discounting. So we have these future cash flows. For X. calculations also, we work together, we revise. We are revising advanced financial 
management, advanced financial management. So we have a column here for the years. We have a column for year. And this one we are just copying from the question. Copying from the question. Then another column from the question, you can see we have the cash flows. Cash flows. We have cash flows. Cash cash flows. And the cash flows are in in thousand. Then we'll have the discounting factor. Discounting. Discounting factor. Discounting factor will copy from the tables, from tables, present value tables. These are future cash flows. Okay. Then we after uh, after computing, we multiply the discounting factor plus the cash flows. We'll have the discounted value. Discounted value. The discounted value. We'll have a table for discounted value. Then after we have a table for discounted value, because we are doing calculating payback period, we need to accumulate, cumulative. We need to cumulate. Cumulate will add cumulative discounted value. Cumulative discounted value. All right? So we have uh, cash flows. We are given the cash flows from the question. The cash flows from the question. What are the cash flows from the question? The first year, we have year one, year two, year three, year four. How many years? Uh, six years. Year five, year six. These are six years. At the end of year one, we were given, at the end of year one, at the end of year one, we were told that 25 million will be recovered. 25 million, that is project X. 25 million, we have 25 million. Year two, we have negative 11. Negative 11 million. Year three, I'm copying, you can see. 20 million. Well, I hope you are also copying. You practice. We are revising. Make sure you are not just watching. Don't watch. You need to practice. Practice. Um, uh, year four, we have 15 million. 15 million. Then uh, we have 6 million here at the end of year five. 6 million. At the end of year six, we have five million. So these are uh, these are the cash flows from the question. Project X, Project X. These are the cash flows. Project X. These are the money that will be expected to be received. The we are told the relevant cash flows of the projects are shown in the table. The table. That is that's it. Then we uh, look. For the discounting factors from the tables again, you check your tables, go to your table, check discounting factor. Okay, discounting factor. We are given the cost of capital. The cost of capital is 15%. 15%. 15% uh, one year. 15% one year, I have 0 0.8696. Okay. Uh, 0 0.8696. 0 0.8696. Then it's just a row. You follow the row. 0 0.75. That is year two. On the left side of the present value table, we have periods. So we have looked at the first period against 15%. Then the second period against 15%, uh, we have 0 0.7561. Uh, 0 0.7561. Year three, we have it 0 0.6575. 65.75. Year four, the discounting factor. Year four is 57.18. We have 57.18. I'm copying again, just copying. 57.18. Year five is 49.72. 49.72. Year six is. Um, uh, 4323, 4323, 4323. These are discounting factors, discounting factors. I'm copying, copied from the table, copied from the table. Then you take the calculator, take the calculator. You take the calculator and uh, multiply, multiply this factor with the cash, cash inflow. This is a cash inflow. This money will be received this money, 25 million, will be received at the end. Remember, the question told us 
the cash flows accrue at the end of the year. The reason why we are discounting is because this 25 million is in future terms. It's future value, it's a future value. So we bring it into the present terms. The present value we discount so that you can work with discounted figures because you are calculating discounted payback period. Discounted payback period. So the cash flows, we have to discount the cash flows. And we go check our calculator, scientific calculator. Point, uh, this is 25 million.